Before Naughty Dog were making games about smelly lesbians. <laughs> They made some of the best 3D platformers ever with the Crash Bandicoot series. They are the 3D Donkey Kong Country games we never got. If you don't believe me, check this out. Yo, check this out! And the developers said so as well. Finally, Activision got their thumbs out of their asses and did a remake of the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy on the PlayStation. Some people say it's a remaster, but I say it's more of a remake because there are gameplay changes, totally redone graphics and music. So it's a remake, not a remaster, even though it has a lot of similarities. Sometimes a remake is totally different, like Metroid Zero Mission. That game is like way different to the original. However, this one still has enough differences to be called a remake. And why is it called the Insane Trilogy? I don't know, I guess it's insane. It's crazy! <laughs> Alright, it's, um, it's, it's not that crazy. Okay, let's start with the first game. The story for this one goes that Cortex and that Frankenstein looking guy, I forget his name, create Crash Bandicoot. They put him in some vortex thingy. They're trying to make him their general, but then Crash escapes and I think they're trying to do the same thing to the female one or trying to use her as bait to get Crash. I don't know, it's not very clear. It's basically a rescue the princess story, but instead of a princess, it's a bandicoot with huge boobs. A furry's wet dream. I reviewed the Game Boy Advance games and it's very similar. It's just about getting to the end of a level. On the way to the finish, there's a bonus stage where you can get some lives. However, in this game you have to collect three girl bandicoot faces in order to play the bonus stages. Don't worry, it's not that hard unless you collect none of the boxes. There's also Frankenstein and Cortex bonus stages where you have to do the same thing to play them. Their faces are a lot trickier to collect, and their bonus stages are harder. There's enemies, boxes, TNT. It's like an actual 2D platformer put into 3D. As opposed to games like Super Mario 64 at the time, which was completely different. Not like a platformer at all if I'm being honest. Even though it does have platforming, it felt more like an adventure game. The level design is actually pretty good. It usually has a couple of ideas in a level, then repeats it. For example, in these ones are rolling stones. As you go further on it gets more challenging. In between the rolling stones are these skunk enemies and man-eating plants. Later on there's another level. It's pretty much the same thing but they add some moving platforms and it's more challenging. That's what most of the levels do though some have more ideas than others. Another interesting one is Toxic Waste with the Donkey Kong like rolling barrels. First it starts with normal ones that are pretty easy to jump over, then they get faster, then eventually there's ones that start bouncing, plus normal rolling ones, and then there's just bouncing ones. It can be pretty hard with the depth perception to dodge, but just look where the sparks land, and you can do it! There's the laboratory level, it's one of the few that combines different ideas together. You have to hit these exclamation mark switches, it opens doors or puts a bridge down. You have electricity and these slime thingies to dodge, it combines the ideas here and there. Generally, I like the level design. The guy from Game Explained, John, didn't like it. He thought they were repetitive. I have to disagree. Even though they have one level and then another that will be similar, but harder, later on they throw in a lot of different ideas. Some levels are pretty straightforward, others are grid based, and then there are the 2D platformer levels. With the first Crash game, there seems to be a lot more focus on verticality, which is interesting because the next two games barely focused on that at all. Most of the enemies are good, some you can only spin out when they're in the air, which makes no sense, it's confusing as hell. There's a decent variety of enemies and whatnot. The levels are straight in succession. You have islands, the last level of an island you usually fight a boss and then you go to the next one and so forth. That's the structure, it's simple, you just jump, spin and that's it. No complicated BS. The first island and first boss are easy. When you get to Native Fortress, that's when the game starts kicking your ass. And holy crap this game is hard. I knew the game was notorious for being difficult, but damn these bridge levels. Oh my gosh, they can suck my dick. It's not too bad when you have to land on two planks, but when it's on a single plank, that stuff pisses me off. 
For some reason, I can never land it. Ugh. Damn it! Cockballs! Oh, come on! Mm. Mm. Damn it! Mm. Bullcrap! Ass! Damn it! It's either I fall too short or overshoot the mark. The precision you need is ridiculous. And are the hogs meant to be floating in the air like this? In the hint thing it says, Direct attacks don't hurt these high altitude hogs. I thought they would fall through the gap or something, but nope, they just float there. Word of advice for those levels. Use the D-pad. For some reason the analog stick really sucks on these ones. And also with the turtles you have to bounce off, run up to and bounce off them. Don't bounce on them from standstill cause that's a pain in the ass. Just make a run up and the level becomes so much easier, even though it's still hard. But besides those bridge stages, the levels are challenging but doable. One problem I forgot to mention was at times there are depth perception issues. It's sometimes hard to judge the distance of platforms and enemies. Another problem I have is with Crash Bandicoot's controls. He feels really damn heavy like he's carrying a bag of bricks. You jump and he breaks the law of gravity with his fall speed. It definitely takes some getting used to. Coming off the Game Boy Advance games, I think he controlled a lot better in those ones. It takes some getting used to, but I'd prefer if you didn't have to get used to it at all. You can't deny my logic. It's better that you don't have to get used to the controls because they should always feel good straight away. The boss fights are really cool, I like them. That John guy from Game Explained hated them for some reason. I found them a lot of fun and the final boss is a worthy challenge. I was hesitant to do this, but I'm like, as a reviewer, I should probably try to 100%. You do that by collecting all the boxes in a level, which rewards you with a clear gem. Eh, it wasn't that fun. You'll do a level, then you realise you need to collect a coloured gem to expose these platforms to get extra boxes. There are certain levels where you can get a coloured gem. In these ones, you have to collect all the boxes without dying, which is not fun at all. I heard that in the original game, that to even get a normal clear gem, that you had to do that for every level. Oh my gosh, that would have sucked the biggest, fattest, juiciest dick ever. The main game is fun, but 100% in is eh. There's a couple of exclusive levels to the Insane Trilogy, one of them is called Stormy Ascent. This was a level in the original Crash Bandicoot, but it was taken out because it was deemed too hard and holy crap they were damn right. Damn this level is hard. I have to say this is one of the hardest platforming levels I've ever played in my life. This part is the real killer. This one took me a damn while to figure out. It's like, what the hell am I meant to do? I had a lot of fun with it even though I nearly gave up, but I did it. One life left too. Overall, I like the first Crash Bandicoot a lot, even though I died like a bazillion times. It's a great game as long as you are prepared to see this a lot. The next game is Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. The story goes that Cortex somehow survives the first game. He needs crystals so he can take over the world, I guess, and so he uses Crash to get the crystals for him. And because Crash is an idiot, he does that, but of course you end up beating him. That's the story, nothing special. So the difference between this one and the first game, well, now you've got this slide move and a slide jump and a high jump. Now instead of doing every level in succession, you've got a little hub world where you can do 5 levels in any order you want, and then fight a boss and move to the next area. Now the levels feel roomier, in the first game they were kinda compact. There's new level themes and all that and you have to grab a crystal. Sometimes you have to go out of your way to get the crystal, but most of the time it's just kinda there. Almost pointless. They could've at least justified it. They could've had some little challenge to get it or something like that. It seems they were doing it because of the whole collectathon games at the time. Just seems to be buying into trends. Guess you could say the same thing about the hub world as well. The levels are cooler. Some are similar to Crash 1, but in the water levels you get to ride a jet ski, and instead of getting chased by a boulder, you get chased by this huge ass polar bear. There's more level ideas, but I don't want to spoil them. The levels in Crash 2 are pretty similar structure wise to the first game. Like they have a couple ideas in a level and switch between them. For example, in these river levels you have the platforming parts and the parts where you're on a jet ski. It just switches between the two and gradually gets more difficult as you go on. And another river level later on does nearly the same thing, but more challenging. 
The guy from Game Explain was saying Crash 2 was a big improvement, but it's doing the same thing. Even the levels where you get chased by the bear or boulders keep slowly adding more obstacles or enemies to the level. It reminds me of how the toxic waste level in the first game worked. There's just a bit more variety compared to Crash 1, so a little bit of an improvement. The controls really screw this game up. There are some jumps where you barely make it. You have to rely on the slide jump, it doesn't feel right. This game wasn't known for being hard, but I found it just as hard as the first game. It pissed me off a lot. I got a lot more frustrated with this one. I enjoyed this the least out of the trilogy. Maybe it's because I'm familiar with this one the most? I played this one a lot back in the day so it annoys me. And oh my gosh, the ice physics are just terrible. You either move too slow or you move too damn fast. It just becomes trial and error because there's no way to react to whatever obstacle comes. Though I did start enjoying it more towards the end. I think the controls really screw this up. Crash needed to be a bit floatier or have more momentum as in jump further. It just screws this game over big time. Also the depth perception problem from the first game rears its ugly head in here too. Ugh, going for 100% is like putting your penis in a blender. It's not fun at all. Even though there's some secret levels in that, it's just not worth it. However, they seem to put more effort. There's certain platforms that appear when you have no death. There are secret exits. There's secret pathways to get coloured gems and all that. It's not that fun to be honest, I just gave up with it because I got bored. The boss fights are okay, the final boss is really damn easy. I beat him first try. What a letdown. I enjoyed this one the least. This game is still good, though a little bit frustrating at times. So one last game. It's called Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. The story goes that some explosion at the end of Crash 2 releases Uka Uka and he gets pissed with Cortex. He wants to travel in time to get crystals, but Aka Aku knows for some reason so he sends Crash and Coco to collect all the gems before Cortex and Uka Uka does. This one has a cool time travel theme which I think is awesome. It's easily the best of the three. I had the most fun with it. The levels are just so cool. They add non-platforming stages. There are jet ski ones. It reminds me of Wave Race 64. There are racing levels set in the 50s. You have to get first to complete it. I found them a lot of fun. There are plane levels which remind me of Star Fox 64's all range mode. And even the barrel roll makes you invulnerable, which is a nice nod. There's also a boss fight which reminds me of Star Fox 64's on rail levels. That's awesome. And what else? Oh yeah, there's some swimming levels. They're okay, I guess. The other levels are pretty similar to the first two games, but they feel more refined and less frustrating. Design wise, they repeat a level theme and add one new idea to it later on. They have a bunch of enemies and obstacles they put together, then a later level will add one thing, like a wizard in the medieval levels. Then in the next medieval stage, they add a two-headed ogre. They repeat those enemies and ideas and gradually make them harder. The big change is the other style levels I mentioned before. So the normal levels are more refined than the first two games, but the special levels just add that much needed variety so you don't get bored. You get new abilities after you complete boss fights. You get a double jump, a body slam, and even a frickin' rocket launcher, which is easily the best new ability. There's only a couple times where you have to use those abilities. Most of the time, it's just there to enhance your experience. The boss fights are cool as well. Once again, the final boss sucks dick. That one was too easy as well. I didn't bother 100%ing because I was burnt out from Crash 2. I assume it sucks as well. The main game is awesome though, so who cares? Crash Bandicoot 3 got an extra level called Future Tense. It was made by Vicarious Visions. It was the only level done by them. This one is a lot easier compared to Stormy Ascent. I'm glad, that level is pretty crazy. Future Tense is an alright level, there's not much else to say about it. I think I've said it a million times, but Crash 3 is awesome. So let's talk about some overall stuff. The graphics for each game are amazing. It's easily the best looking Switch game I've played, even though I haven't played every single Switch game. There were only a couple of instances where I could notice slowdown, but most of the time it was smooth like a baby's ass. And the music? Eh, I'm not a big fan, it doesn't hit the feels man. It's got some catchy bouncy stuff, but I don't feel anything. It doesn't tug on them heartstrings man. Okay, I enjoyed the bonus stage music, also the Frankenstein guy bonus level music, and the final boss theme from the first Crash game. And the 50s bike racing music was kinda cool too, but the rest is meh. Oh yeah, you can play as Coco in all the levels in every game. She's exactly the same as Crash. I don't see the point of having her. They should have at least given her some unique moves or something like that, but... Pfft. 
Oh well. Every game has a time trial mode. It's just a speedrun mode, but they put in yellow boxes with a number on it. When hit, the time stops for whatever number is on the box. You can get certain coloured relics depending on how fast you go. The best is platinum, but good luck trying to get those. If you're into speedrunning, I guess you'll enjoy it. I just find it to be a nice extra. The games have some good humour and charm. Oh, how adorable. I always like the little extra things developers do. There is dynamic difficulty. What that does is give you earlier checkpoints, Aku Aku masks, or more lives, depending on how much you are struggling. It even slows things down like the boulder. Very handy for the first game. The Insane Trilogy is awesome, unless you're into the 100% stuff. Avoid that because it's a pain in the ass. And also be willing to die a lot because the games are hard. Would I recommend? Yes, oh yeah, definitely. Definitely recommend. Even just for Crash Bandicoot 3 alone I would recommend it. I wish more 3D platformers copied this kind of platforming as opposed to the collectathon style. Even Naughty Dog made a collectathon. It's crazy. Even though these games were successful, it barely got any clones. I can't wait for the Spyro trilogy, if they actually put every game in the cartridge and don't make you download the rest. Because I had a lot of fun with those games back in the day too. There's nothing wrong with nostalgia. Nostalgia is great. Overall, I wish the controls were better because it makes things harder than they should be at times. And also, I wish they fixed the occasional part with bad depth perception. That's about the only problems I have with the compilation. If there's going to be a new Crash Bandicoot game, they need to fix those controls. They need to get the bricks out of his pockets. Not a fan of the music anyway, so I don't care. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, give me a small loan of a million dollars, and see ya, my scholarly students.